let's check how many steps we done. Look at these guys. Good morning guys, I'm now making my way to Portobello market, I mean Notting Hill I think area I will be showing you a lot of things, some things that you already know and some things and places that you haven't seen Stay tuned and let's explore London I'm now in Portobello market and I see some stands over there and also it stretches over here and maybe to do it, it could take about 20 minutes. This market has been here since 18th century and there's different items and different things depending on the day you will come. Today is Friday so that makes it the second best day to see this market. The best day you could come is Saturday and on Saturday they got everything from fruits, from antiques and everything you could find. On my left this is an area where it must be all foods and on my right you got I think mostly clothes and on my back it was just random items some antiques and I think with the antiques they spread around the area so there's a lot of items if you want to buy something I'm just wandering around and making my way to Little Venice but yeah you could maybe park in the price you can ask to Give it to you cheaper if you want that's it from the market let's check it a bit more and see what we got over here i'm making my way now to little venice and it would take about 30 minutes from here by foot and i was more impressed by the buildings around here the architecture it's not like the normal UK houses, they got something special but the market, it was okay it has a lot of stuff, a lot of items but because I will not buy anything, I didn't want to spend that much time there but if you're looking to buy something unique, this place is for you but our day it's packed, a lot of walking, a lot of things to see things that I haven't seen before so I need to spend wisely my time and get the most out of my day now i made it to little venice not in italy but in london and next to me you can see some beautiful boats and some nice colors waterways got some pubs next to the boats and it's really nice area to come chill and have something to eat and enjoy this nice atmosphere i'm now walking in the pathway and making my way i think to paddington bear statue because it goes along this road and i'm checking this area out and if i find a good place for some breakfast that would be great so let's check this area out and i will show you around how beautiful this place is Hi there, can I ask something? Can I ask you something? Yeah. Only this is uh, Little Venice, only this is the area. Is so that there is side. a lot more yeah, on that, that side. side that side you're going to Magic Square. Okay, yeah. and do they got gondolas around here? Sorry? Do they got gondolas like in Italy? Yeah, it has small boats in there. Oh, really? It's all in Magic Square. Okay, cheers, thank you. Now in Paddington train station and I came only to see Paddington Bear statue which is a really famous statue and the only thing I know for this is its name it was been given from the train station and that he likes marmalade sandwich that's the only two things I know about this bear so I will set up my tripod take a picture and then continue to my next attraction so there's slightly change of plans I couldn't eat the breakfast at Little Venice because I was planning to see the changing guards at Buckingham Palace at 11 o'clock so I rushed a bit to go to the bear statue and then I saw the time and I don't think I can make it maybe another day maybe tomorrow or Sunday we will see so now 
are walking towards Kensington Palace and will take about 25 minutes. So right now I'm in Kensington Gardens and it's a beautiful place, fountains and we are heading to Kensington Palace on my left side behind me it's Hyde Park now I'm heading to the palace the cost if you want to enter there it's 17 pounds but we are not doing it anyway today we are just passing by taking some pictures and checking this beautiful park I think I can see the Kensington Palace it's over there and you got some big pond here people relaxing chilling it's a really nice park my dog would have loved this there's a lot of dogs around and it's a really nice place if you had a long day from exploring London so let's go to this palace and check it out and continue with the plan this is the Kensington Palace which is a royal residence of Duke and Duchess of Cambridge and when it opens you can visit it and see the rooms 10 minutes from the Kensington Palace on my right we got the Royal Albert Hall it looks round so it's a very distinctive building and here it's a concert hall so they are making concerts, operas, I don't know what but also behind me on my left it's the Albert Memorial, which I don't know how I missed this while I was in Castle Garden. Also from here, we got a few minutes behind it, the three important museums of London, the Natural and History Museum, Science Museum and Victoria and Albert Museum, which is totally free when it's open, but right now it's closed because of the pandemic but we will pass anyway and see those museums I'm in the middle of the three museums and it's 10 minute walk again from Royal Alpen Hall left we got the Victoria and Alpen Museum and on my right it's the Science Museum and the Natural History Museum so now that I show you the three museums it's time to head to Harrods which is I think five minutes from here and everyone knows Harrods but I will give you more information as soon as I'm there I'm now in Harrods one of the most famous department stores in London and the most exclusive in the world it has 5,000 brands and it's absolutely amazing here we also got some unique decorations around the shops like some Egyptian crafts and it's really impressive while I'm making my way down, I will tell you an interesting part regarding the escalators. So, Harrods was the first escalator in the world in 1898. And because people were, were afraid to use them at the beginning, in the first few weeks, Harrods offered them free branding. But this place is huge, it has everything from perfume, food, clothes. It's huge, you can spend at least three hours going around this place so I was looking for something to eat but this place is so big I couldn't find the restaurants even if they was on the fourth floor I couldn't find them so I'm making my way down and find something to eat while I'm outside Carrots you can't go wrong with McDonald's so after I eat I recharge my batteries of my body and my phone continue our sightseeing so right now I'm in Buckingham Palace, a more touristy spot behind me. This road is really important in London. It's called the Mall, and usually it's a ceremonial road. In front of me we got the Victoria Memorial, and also here it's the Buckingham Palace, which is the official residence of the Queen. Regarding the changing guards, they are not doing it right now at this month at least because of the pandemic but maybe when you travel to London 
you may have the chance to see the changing guards. If you want to see my attempts of my pictures, you can check my Instagram. Exactly opposite Pakeha Palace, you got St. James Park, which we are about to enter now. But before we enter, let me show you the plan. We are right here, and I will be walking to the Blue Bridge, take some pictures, then walk again here, go to the horse guards, and then to the Downing Street, which is the Prime Minister. And from there, most likely, I will get towards London Eye and some other tourist attractions. So let's see how it goes and explore this park. After you finish your walk from St. James Park, which is quite small and you could do it maybe in 20 minutes, you could pass from the Prime Minister's office and the War Museum and also to the horse cars, which unfortunately I miss them. They close in at 4, but I don't know why people are still entering there, but they finish at 4, so there is no horse cars to see. So here I got few options that I could do. I could visit and go up towards the Trafalgar Square and explore there the square, Leicester Square, Oxford Street, or I could maybe go towards Big Ben and go down and turn around then, depending on the time. Maybe we have time and do everything. So I will see you when I reach there. I came exactly opposite Big Ben now, but my legs are complaining too much walking so i need to relax a bit so here it is and we got next to it the westminster abbey let me give you a fact about big ben this is called elizabeth tower big ben it's the belt behind the clock and it's attached to the westminster abbey which is the house parliament so i will give you a better angle as soon as i cross the bridge and show you a few things more so until then I just crossed now the Westminster Bridge and look at these guys way more better angle the Big Ben and the Westminster Palace and also here it's a famous spot where you can take some pictures with the Westminster Palace as a background. After a lot of pictures I'm passing now through the London Eye and also we got the London Dungeon behind me, London Eye, we got the sea life here, the Shrek but it's closed. I will be coming back and doing the big attraction in another day. So right now I'm heading towards Covent Garden which I'm not sure if it's closed but I'm going towards there because there's a lot of stuff to do there and if it's closed I will go towards Gordon's bar and have a wine or something and then explore more it's only six so I've got plenty of time to maybe do the rest that I already have planned so I will see you on the opposite side Look at this view guys from the Jubilee Bridge. So I was planning to come to Gordon's wine bar after some exploration to have a drink but look at this line guys. <laughs> here is Gordon's wine bar. I think I'm here in the Covent Garden. I already got my food so I'm not eating anything right here. You got also opposite the London Transport Museum, which most likely it's also closed. What 
the better way to enjoy your food and see a show. This area is really nice and I love the atmosphere also. The sun is setting down so I have to leave from Covent Garden which was a cool place, a really nice vibe and I enjoyed my time there. You could have something to eat, something to drink, enjoy the music and just relax. So now I came to Trafalgar Square which is in the center of London and here it hosts many numerous events throughout the year. Also there is a huge column here called Nessons Column and this column was built in an honor of Admiral Nelson, which won the Battle of Trafalgar. So also here is the square. And from here, I was thinking to go to Gordon's wine bar, but I'm not going. I will be doing it in a different day. I will head up to Bear Street and then Leicester Square. Bear Street, I think there is a Paddington Bear there, just for a picture, and they head to Leicester. From the Bear Street, you end up to Leicester Square, which I came again to this area. It's next to Hippodrome, and this is the square. There's a lot of people sitting on the grass, chilling. So the bear, it's actually next to this, I think, memorial, I'm not sure. Uh, it's right there to make it more interesting make a sandwich or marmalade and just copy the pair from here i will be going to nelsia it's a little bit out of plan but it's only five minutes from here so why not just a nice place that you could take a picture so after there i will head back to the plan which is the soho square piccadilly circus Oxford Street and a lot more. Stay tuned as we got a lot of time ahead of us and a lot of things to do. It wasn't a bad area I was expecting to be empty actually and didn't thought there was a restaurant or pubs around there. So if you want to take a picture you could go during the day where there will be less crowd but still it's a nice area to grab something to eat and drink. So that was Nels Yard. I'm showing you also the nightlife in London during the pandemic, which is crazy. From Chinatown, if you go straight, you end up in Piccadilly Circus. And if I turn right, I will go to the Soho Square. So I will see which way is the best to do, but I will do them both anyway. So that was Chinatown, uh, there's a lot of people around still during the pandemic, it's like nothing is happening but at one point we need to get back to normal so why not. From here I will get to Piccadilly Circus first and then to Soho Square as it's closer and then we see from there. I believe I will get to Oxford Street or Regent Street, we will see. Full of life with street performers around the place and these huge signs which makes it even more unique. So London as you notice it has a lot of squares which are worth visiting and there's something different in every single one of them. So let's move on to the next square which will be the Soho Square. Soho Square, actually I didn't like it, there is nothing to see there, there are just people sitting in the road and uh, enjoying their drink. There is nothing there but I liked the area around it, which it had again pubs and stuff, uh, some sex shops, there is a lot of restaurants but not the Soho Square, there is nothing there to see. So guys, from Soho Square, I ended up in Oxford Street, which is a long road with a lot of shops, especially at Christmas. 
You can see those decorations with the poles, it's absolutely amazing. So now I'm heading to South Avi Auction House, something like that is called. I'm not quite sure about the name, which I will tell you a bit more when I reach there. I will pass to one restaurant, which quite possibly it's the most beautiful in London and it's really expensive if you get something there. What is it? It's called Sketch and every room in that place is decorated really nice. So I think it should be somewhere here, but ah, here it is. You can see the bike. Uh, this is the entrance, but it's closed. It's 10 o'clock now and I can't even see myself yet. This is a GoPro. So yeah, it usually opens at 11 a.m. and closes at 7 p.m. But I wanted to show you this place to put it in your list if you ever visit London. So let's make our way to South of by Auction House. Guys, okay, there was nothing there. I have no idea why I had on my mouth to see that place. I remember there was something unique about it, but this is not it. I remember a statue. With that statue, I believe it was the oldest in the world or of UK. I, I'm not quite sure, but there's nothing here. There's just a lot of shops, expensive shops, brand shops, so nothing worth coming here. I'm making my way now to two last things. I will show you another unique restaurant from outside of course because most likely everything is closed now and also we will lend the vlog to one famous hotel called The Ridge so this is the restaurant Gymkhana but when I check the pictures I don't think it is but maybe I google it and I think it's maybe a good restaurant to come that's why I marked it but yeah anyway just to consider it so let's go to that hotel and finish the vlog standing outside now of the rich hotel which from outside it doesn't look like a five-star hotel look, look at this it's supposed to be a five-star hotel i think only the rich people can come here this is not for me maybe i, I made mistake again i don't know I will end the vlog here it's been a long day it's 10 30 now and let's check how many steps we done let me see look at this guys 34 kilometers and 50,000 steps so yeah that's a lot so i hope my itinerary gave you some ideas of what you could do if you come to London. There is no way you could explore London in one day, but I try to put as much things as I can in, in a way that will be easy to work with. So this will be the part one. I have part two where it's in a different area of London, like the London Bridge, the Shard, some markets and some amazing views from the Pilmos Hill so stay tuned for the part two if you found the video useful let me know in the comment section give me your feedback and I definitely will appreciate it so let's hope now on my way back we don't run into some drunk people because the nightlife today was crazy there was a lot of people drinking out so maybe we will run into them in the trains but we see so thank you guys for watching it was an interesting day i really enjoyed it i hope you did too so i'll see you on the next part good night guys